In Bristol, early morning flights are being targeted by customs officers, clamping down on passengers attempting to profit from cheap and illegal tobacco from outside the EU. Um, colleagues at the back are having a look to see if they can pick out any cigarettes or tobacco, possibly drugs as well. I'll stop whoever needs to be stopped. Yeah, we've got uh, a just the one bag is a black and grey big soft-sided bundle. Okay, thank you. It's back coming through now. And watches closely to identify the passenger. Go with a white t-shirt. Then waits for him to walk through the green channel. If he has cigarettes, it's at this point an offence has been committed. Are you aware of um, the allowances of what you are actually allowed to bring back from Turkey with regards to cigarettes and tobacco? No. Okay. Did you purchase any tobacco, uh, cigarettes, yeah. alcohol? Yeah. Who are they for? Are they? Uh, right. right. Yeah. And we just went by what they told us. They say they've been given false yeah. information in Turkey. He's actually got somewhere in the region of 4,000 cigarettes, and you are only allowed 200, so that's quite excessive amount to bring back, really. You just go by what they allow you and pay the consequences, possibly. It's going to be an expensive mistake. And gives the man the bad news. It's an offence because you didn't declare it. If you'd have declared it when you came, no, when you came in, before mm -hmm. before you came through the channels, if you'd have come to one of us and said, got oh, this amount. Excuse me, I've got to the end of that thing. There's no something to declare or nothing to declare. There is a red point down there with a the phone. It's, a, it's, it's right by the bag, where the bags come out. There's a possibility you would have been allowed to pay the duty on the cigarettes. But for an amount like this, 5,000 cigarettes, when you're actually only allowed to bring back 200, it's just too much. It's too much. I'm sorry. In Dover, customs officers are hunting for smugglers on a different scale. And trucks carrying certain cargoes set the alarm bells ringing. This lorry full of chipboard is a prime target. Oh, the vehicle looks a bit, a bit dodgy, yeah. Armed with their giant X-ray, customs can quickly scan huge trucks and innocent drivers can be sent happily on their way. This load is chipboard, the zone's intact, you're free to scan. Thank you. So we're looking, looking for any inconsistency. I've been told the load's chipboard, so it should just be the same all the way through. There's something in there that shouldn't be there. The X-ray has picked up a large anomaly, which needs further investigation. It looks highly suspicious. So the truck will now need to be offloaded. It will take hours, meaning a long delay for the driver. Back in Bristol, the man who's had his cheap Turkish cigarette seized by Anne isn't going quietly. After her 12-hour night shift, Anne's doing her best to keep calm. There's one, there's one rule for one person, one rule for a different person. One customs officer will allow one, one customs officer will allow something totally different. This is the kind of thing that puts small businesses out of business and that is what they try to stop. No, it isn't. It's getting the money from the, from the government. It's, a, it's a, a large amount and it wasn't declared before you came through the channels. You actually came through the channels without making... What channels are you talking about? This, this point down here these, that you walked through. The man doesn't have a leg to stand on and Anne's patience is being tested to the limit. I understand at this point there is not a green channel because there is construction work taking place. But everybody that wants to declare something yep. should either speak to one of our officers that is stood here, or this red point here, there is a phone, and if you pick it up, you will be connected to a customs officer and you will need to declare what you have. This is a declaration. If you make this, we offer you to pay the duty. Unfortunately, you didn't do that. Well, I had to stop you. I came from there. The... I walked over to here. Yes. I'm looking for my baggage. I come round here, I get my baggage, I look here, nothing to declare, arrivals from European Union, whoosh, 
Where's something to declare? This is oh, my something to on, declare. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where is something to declare? Well, it no, doesn't need on, to then. say... Play the so game. It doesn't need to say something to declare. You can read, obviously, and that's... Nothing to declare. Big letters. Yes, that is. I'm not going to argue anymore. Look, goods to declare, red point. Warning, well, if you have well, failed to make the that. appropriate... I didn't know that. All I... <sighs> I I'm know, not going to argue about bit... it anymore. Okay. You do have the right to appeal yeah. against my decision. Okay. Um, the rules are the rules. I'm sorry, I don't make those rules. I know, it's just the way, it's just, you know, one for one, one for another. So I can keep these, can I? Yes. As a final act of generosity, Anne decides to let them have back their allowance. But the man's angry mother doesn't know how to keep quiet either. I think they should be sorted out. They're telling us one thing and laws another thing, though. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that. <laughs> Undercover officers also take on cigarette smugglers, but on a global scale. In 2003, investigators in Bristol got a tip-off about a second-hand furniture dealer called Smith smuggling cigarettes from the Far East. Smith's level of business and his income tax returns didn't reflect on the lifestyle he appeared to enjoy. He had a large house and a swimming pool. It was decided that we would mount a surveillance operation on Smith to identify his associates and to gather evidence to support a, a likely prosecution for cigarette smuggling. One of these uh, associates was, was a gentleman in Birmingham called George George visited Malaysia on a number of occasions and it was, uh, it was obvious that those visits were to, uh, to organise the uh, eventual importation of containers. The investigation uncovered an extremely well-organized criminal gang bringing in containers of cigarettes to Southampton Container Port. What they were actually doing was piggybacking containers of flat pack bunk beds from Malaysia and China. The cigarettes were in identical boxes to the flat pack bunk beds. The only difference was no bunk beds. During this surveillance, officers in Southampton x-rayed a container hiding over two million cigarettes. But to guarantee a conviction and ensure the maximum sentence, officers also wanted to prove that Smith was responsible for coordinating the importation, which meant proving links to the Far East. It was clear that in, in Operation Commute that Smith must have had contacts in the, in the Far East. One person identified through the surveillance was, was a Malaysian national female. Smith and the woman were clearly unaware that they were the focus of a high-level surveillance operation. In, the, in July of 2003, officers surveilled Smith and the Malaysian female at Heathrow Airport. They surveilled the lady checking in for a flight to Malaysia. The officers searched her bags covertly and found exactly what they needed. She was totally unaware that the examination had taken place and officers found a diary. And this female's diary contained handwritten notes relating to containers, freight charges, Far Eastern ports. The evidence of the, of the diary and Smith's association with, uh, with this Malaysian female it put him up the ladder a few rungs. It confirmed that he was an organiser of this, this fraud. At this point, the officers decided it was time to seize the containers and stop the illegal gang's trade route. Their funds were being, were being starved. They were running out of money. They needed to think quick. They decided to use another company to import, or another company name to import their containers. Um, the surveillance carried on on Smith. On one occasion, Smith was seen to, to leave one car and joined some associates in another car. A keen, keen officer walked along, had a look through the window, and there was a piece of paper on, on the back seat. And that piece of paper had a container number on. That container number was the next container we seized. With a strong case against the two ringleaders assured, Smith and his associates were arrested. He had actually successfully, with George, imported 10 containers. With the help of our detection colleagues in Southampton, we seized 11 containers that contained 25 million cigarettes. The total revenue evaded was around about 9 million pounds. 
With the sheer scale of the fraud and the overwhelming evidence, investigators weren't surprised by the sentences handed down. Smith was sentenced to three years, eight months imprisonment. George received a, a prison sentence of three years and 11 months. Some people would say they played the game. Uh, on this occasion, uh, the authorities won. Still to come, officers stop a tricky customer in Gatwick. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All right. That's your business. Coming up, a passenger's playing up in Gatwick. Um, I haven't finished yet. Sir, let this go. This is my document. You read my stuff. Stay there. Off the coast of Cornwall, customs cutter searcher is patrolling the limits of British waters, hunting for yachts headed for the UK from the Caribbean. Right, let's leave us at Mary's, the Silly Isles, and we're going out to the west. Um, and we're doing what we call a deep sea sweep. We're looking for anything that's out there, small commercial ships, yachts, fishing vessels. And we'll have a look at them, and within a 12 mile limit, we'll board them and, and see where they're up to. The Atlantic is increasingly dangerous at this time of year, but smugglers are prepared to risk their lives in the hope of sneaking drugs into the UK undetected. Territorial waters, uh, we've got the power to board any vessel and ask people questions of where they've come from and search of vessels. Colin uses a powerful radar to scan the ocean for yachts. It tells us there's a target there, and that allows us to watch his course and speed, see where he's going, which direction he's going for a start. And then we'll go and have a look at him. It's nice to find things, uh, because it gives the guys a buzz. Um, that's what you're here for in the first place. But today, there's nothing around but a vast ocean. And it's easy to see why the cutter crews are the most sought-after jobs in customs. Beautiful, aren't they? And that was the game you used to do. You could see how close you get to the basket shark. The chipboard truck with a suspicious X-ray is now in the search bay. The German driver is questioned while Michael tries to uncover anything stashed inside the load. Well, it's a load of chipboard, um, so we've done as we drilled in two holes towards the back. As I drilled through, it kind of went down about that thing and then just gave way. Um, and as I pulled the drill bit, I could smell a little bit of tobacco and also I could see a little bit of tin foil. The only problem is, is with wood sometimes this, because the drill, it burns it when you're, when you're drilling. It can smell a little bit like, um, you know, kind of tobacco type smell. It could be a false alarm, but as the top layer of chipboard comes off, the source of the tobacco smell becomes very clear. Michael has uncovered a massive haul of cigarettes in a coffin concealment. The driver is arrested immediately. Well, there's a large quantity of tobacco, uh, mild cigarettes. Um, I'm guessing there's some other bits and pieces and boxes and stuff, but we'll find out in a bit. Well, the chipboard load's quite normal and it's quite common, but as you can see, there are, it's easy to conceal items within it because you can, it's only cheap wood, it's a cheap load, they can get rid of it quite easily and they can cut holes in it. While the driver's questioned to see if he's involved, the officers need to count up the cigarettes. How much is it? You've got 160,000 in there, in the boxes. Yeah. 160,800 um, on the pallet. So in total, it's 320,800. Yeah. So like uh, six. In all, Nearly two million cigarettes. Because you spend so much time looking in lorries and, and not finding stuff, because obviously, you know, not everyone's bringing things in. So it's, it's good to find something. That's a, a good number as well. This is what we kind of want to get, really, because this is the big numbers. In Gatwick, the baggage x ray has picked up a suspiciously empty suitcase, and customs want to talk to the passenger. Officers have to tackle all kinds of passenger and some are more cooperative than others. Hi, sir. Hi, where have you come from today? Tripoli, yeah? OK, just want to bring your bag over here for us. Just here. Officers ask simple questions to work out if further investigation is needed. But this man is making things difficult. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll try and make this as painless as possible. Well, you need to be quick, yeah? 
but I understand I've got to do my job though, yeah. Just, uh, first of all, whereabouts are you going to in the UK? Where, where's home for you here? When I live here. Yeah, yeah, where's yeah, home? Yeah, give me your system. Right, if you tell me, then I won't have to go and check it. Yeah, you go and check it. No, if you, you hey, just tell me where you're going. Give me a break, then just let you go. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All That's right. not your business. Did you pack the bags yourself? Yes, yes, yes. And do you know what's inside your bags? Listen, I have just opened it. All right. Can you check Well, if you can it? open your bag up and let's have a quick look inside again. Officers were alerted by the empty bag, but are now very intrigued by the man's demeanor. Just got an empty bag, yeah? All right. Okay, that's all right. No, no, no. I won't need to take my everything name. out. My son is just looking for me. Just get the... All right, sir. All right. Stuff. Sir. All right, you leave, leave me to this, all right? And I'll finish, and then you can be on your way. All right, just let me do my job. Finish and let okay. me go, idiot. How much money have you got there? You can count it. Is your money? No, it's, it's your money. So, you, yeah, so you, tell, tell me how much you got. What does that have to do with you? So? What does that have to do with you? I just would like to know how much you've got there. I don't need to tell you. All right, fair enough. And this you. Unless the man starts to cooperate, this baggage search could take quite some time. Searcher's deep sea sweep has so far been a washout. Well, we're heading back in for St. Mary's now. Unfortunately, there wasn't very much out there today at all. We've searched quite a big area, but all this we've found is that lots and lots of dolphins. But heading back in, the radar picks up a target. This is the target here, this chap here. The yacht appears to be coming from the Canaries, a frequent transit point for drugs from Africa and the Caribbean. In this neck of the woods, but uh, most of where those vessels come from, um, into this area, uh, I'd suspect that if there's anything there, it would be drugs. And it's possible it'd be quite well hidden on board the yacht as well. Officers boarding vessels at sea never know what they might face. The drugs trade is worth billions, and smugglers are willing to protect their goods with force. Smugglers also try hard not to stand out from the crowd, so even the most innocent-looking boat needs to be treated with suspicion. This boat seems harmless, but they can't afford to take anything for granted. It's just a customs visit. One of my colleagues is just going to have a quick look around. How many people are there on board in total? Four of us. It's just the four, is it? Nobody else down below. Just let my colleague have a quick look, come back to me and we'll let them know. Okay. Do you have any, um, any drugs on board? Cigarettes, spirits? Narcotics, or firearms, guns, knives, explosives. You've got knives for the kitchen, that's fine. While the officers question the crew, the officer searching below deck signals the all clear. He's happy. He's happy. He does that when he's, when he's happy. <laughs> they decide that the boat is clean, and the happy crew sail off into the sunset. Yes, Ray Billy. Uh, that's us just left the Dutch yacht. But back in Gatwick, it's not such plain sailing. Um, I haven't finished yet. It's all right. Oh. Sir, let this go. This is my document. That's how I'm Yeah. So I need to have a look at that. No, no, no. All right. This is my document. This is special. That's special, is it? Yeah. All right, I need to have a quick look. No. This is my document, that's the best one. Don't need to have a look at this. The only thing you have in your baggage, sir, is liable for me to have a look at. Yeah, right? I don't need to read my stuff. Stay there. Stay there. The man's erratic behaviour is still causing concern. All right, you're not being very helpful, sir, are you? Just want to leave that stuff there a second. 
Some background checks reveal this isn't his first brush with the authorities. Yes, Seattle was a Fits in. <laughs> To rule out any possibility the man's carrying drugs, they need to search him and swab his shoes. I've spoken to an independent senior officer, all right, and they've authorised a rub-down search of your person. What right? that mean? Just like a, a pat-down search like that, OK? What we do is we'll take your stuff with you and we'll go to it with a private room just out there, all right? Out the back, the man continues to make things difficult. Yeah, just place, place on the bed for us. That's right, just place it on the bed and you, you can see it when it starts. I'd, I'd rather you just place it on the bed. Sir, so, please. You can see I'd rather you just place it on the bed. Do a swab of that. Um, he's got two mobile phones plus another SIM card, but again, nothing on the shoes, so I, there's no other reason to hold him, so, all right. In the end, it was all a lot of fuss about nothing. The, the smallest reason can just, someone can just uh, kick off and, and he just threw his uh, dummy out of the pram and just chucked everything around and that, that was about as much as he could do. You know in those first couple of seconds if it's going to be worth it or not um, with him and it's definitely worth taking further just to see what, what he, his story was really. The driver of the chipboard truck was released on bail while investigations into who's responsible for the two million cigarettes continue. In Bristol, customs officer Joe has intercepted two passengers returning from Spain with 8,000 cigarettes. Spain is within the EU, so Joe just needs to work out their consumption rates and make sure they're not intending to sell the goods illegally. Easier said than done. Right, these, these are your cigarettes, yeah? Yes. Okay. And how many do you smoke? Both oh, I smoke a few, not too many. She smokes a lot more than me. So how much do you smoke? She... Sorry? 500 a week. Hmm. I smoke quite a few, but... How many are they then? 50 or 60 a day? Yeah. How many do you smoke? Like a, like a trooper. Have you been stopped uh, before? No, I haven't. No? Yeah, we haven't been stopped. Who is he, anyhow? What, what is he? Do you want to be a pilot? Yeah, we didn't have any, then. No? No. OK. Alright, so... What are you, a pilot? A pilot? Joe now needs to work out if he believes their story. She got open packets on him. I can't really get a lot of sense out of him. But she reckons she smokes 50, 60, and she possibly could. She's already had one. Um, she's going again on Sunday, but I'm tempted to whatever way of where things going, just to. Um, Write down what it got and see what she brings in on Sunday. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Joe decides to let them go. Um, you want to put them in your bag? Put them in? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Sensing it's his lucky day, the passenger decides to try it on. Can't you mark the spirit if you can sell a bit of cheese and copper? Oh, uh, no, sorry. No? We're not allowed to do that. Hey? Hey? No, we can't, can't do that. Hey, can't it? Can you let us <laughs> eh, a couple of bottles of spirits it's for, you know, for Christmas? <laughs> um, oh, we're getting, the, we're getting the spirit of things. Okay. The lady will be searched again when she returns on Sunday. If she brings anything through next time she travels, then she won't be, she, she'll be losing that, basically. But I really doubt she, she will. Um, there it is. There. And at the end of it, I think they're quite happy. He was quite happy. And, Quite a character. Um, he even offered if, uh, for me to go around his house for a cup of tea one day, which is quite nice. In Dover, 
Customs officers face a massive challenge sniffing out drug dealers from the thousands of trucks streaming across the channel 24 hours a day. At the end of the day, we are here first and foremost to stop drugs coming into the country. That's our primary role. If we get a smell of anything, we'll track it down until we either find it or we're happy that there's nothing there. Usually, the intelligence hub picks out target vehicles based on a variety of profiles. But today, Mark is literally following his nose. Let's port it again as well. He's picked up a suspicious scent, and the Dutch truck must now be thoroughly searched. Um, around the other side, when I was doing the outsides, um, I caught a whiff of what I thought was perhaps a herbal substance. Uh, I don't want to say to the driver's right behind you. Um, some kind of a possibly controlled drug. Yep. I think it's, it's strong enough to have a look yeah. in the vehicle. Yeah. And three of us have, have caught a whiff of it. Off, offload bay around there. And we want, we want to take part of your load off and have a look in the lorry, OK? Yeah, yeah over there, yeah. Mark then spots something else that adds to his suspicions. I just noticed that uh, the tyres and some parts of it underneath are splattered with mud. It begs the question, has he been off-road somewhere? Has he been diverted for a purpose? The pallet he's getting off now is the one that was nearest to the smell, if you like, with the front left-hand corner. I can't smell anything now, funnily enough, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look. Yeah. The driver can claim compensation for any damage, but Mark thinks this truck needs this final test. Perhaps the smell of cannabis was coming from another vehicle, and Mark decides it's time to let this driver go. Yeah. Sprawdzono mi towar, naczepę, przywiercono, prześwietlono, sprawdzono całe auto. I myślę, że wszystko jest ok, że jest super, jest dobrze. And as one job finishes, another ferry full of potential smugglers hits the docks. Another target vehicle coming in on the 1300 arrival from Dunkirk. It's all go sometimes. I did say Thursday was a busy day. <laughs> Officers in Gatwick are also investigating a possible Class A drug smuggler acting suspiciously at immigration control. As soon as she was start to be questioned, she said she wants to go to the loo, so uh, she might have something concealed inside her or on her body she wants to get rid of. Morning. So you've come in from Nigeria. You live in Nigeria? You live here? Whereabouts do you live here? One from Abbey. Okay, what do you do here? Okay, so how long have you been in Nigeria for this trip? Two weeks. Is that a holiday or business? Holiday. Okay, so seeing family, friends? Yeah, my family. Okay, this is all your baggage? Yes. And you packed it all yourself? Yes. Okay, you've come into the Green Channel, nothing to declare. Do you understand what you're allowed to bring into the country? Okay, you realize there are other restrictions? And coming into the country, things like drugs and firearms. Has anyone asked you to bring anything here? No. Has anyone forced you to bring anything here? No. Okay, let's have a quick look, shall we? Thank you. Andy searches the bags. The passenger's still acting nervous, so he also swabs the bags for drugs. The bag tests positive for heroin. So this search will have to go further. The body language is quite good. I've had a hit of uh, for heroin on the uh, on the iron scan. I just want a quick rub down to make sure she's not got anything. Okay, just before you go, I'd just like for a, a lady officer to make sure you have nothing on you. Okay, you have any problem with that? Oh, good. Thank you. Hundreds of passengers a year are caught smuggling drugs through Gatwick. The body search will find out if this passenger is one of them. Back in Dover, the next target has been pulled by the specialist rummage team. It's an awkward load, exactly the sort of cover used by smugglers to conceal drugs and tobacco. It's just such a loose description, isn't it? I mean, it is. It's, it's a children's playground, isn't it, basically? Yeah. Well, that time it's been quite easy. Yeah, the bags of balls, yeah. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. It might take a while. 
Okay, it's all going to be handballed off, basically. I mean, I don't know whether they get a forklift in there and get some of the stuff, but... I mean, yeah, you, you see things like this now and again, but, but it's not the norm. I mean, it, I, I, I'm just guessing it's some sort of children's playground that's been out in Spain for the season and, and is being brought back. It is a good cover load, isn't it? I mean, it's very yeah. difficult to get over the top of and, and to see in amongst. After hours of offloading, the team finds some suspiciously heavy wooden boxes. Yeah. No. They've made it look like, they've made it look like the, the spongy steps, haven't they? It's extremely suspicious, so the team decide to drill the boxes. And I mean, you saw, saw the load, how difficult it was to get in. They've managed to, to get themselves in there, identified these uh, packages. They've drilled a hole. And inside, there's some green plastic. I think it's in that one. It's in that one. It's in that one. It's in that one. Stuart thinks the plastic packaging could indicate drugs. I would think that there'll be a large quantity of cannabis in there. There may be up to a ton. The driver is arrested while they work out what they've found. But it's a slow, methodical uh, process now. The guy's arrested. There's no rush. After another two hours of careful unpacking, the moment of truth has arrived. It's just about to take the lid off. I think in the porn, the porn industry, this is the money shot, isn't it? It's a massive haul of what looks like cannabis. I can't smell anything. I'm guessing it's uh, cannabis resin in there. Oh. I still can't get anything. Oh, it smells plastic. Mm. All the boxes are full of bales of cannabis, which have apparently come from a special garden. The maker's manufacturer mark. It's, it's just there. It's come from that particular cannabis farm in Morocco, or wherever it is it's come from, and that they put their own stamp on it. And that's how it gets shipped out. The officers now want to know just how much they've seized from the smugglers. It's the biggest haul of cannabis at Dover for years. So I took 928 kilos. About. <laughs> and the specialist rummage team are delighted. 928 kilos is nearly a ton, so that's excellent. We've had a, we've had a bit of a lean period, actually, our team. We've gone uh, for three months, maybe, without anything. We've had, we've had a few little cigarette seizures might have been on the way, but, but this is what we call a proper job, really. Still to come, officers get to the bottom of the suspected smuggler in Gatwick. Somebody's got a package shoved up the backside, then if you bend them over, you can either see the package or it'll come out. Coming up, officers get to the bottom of the suspected smuggler in Gatwick. And if I can get you to hold on to the side of the bench. Okay, and if you can pop your butt cheeks a little bit. With your hands. In Gatwick, the female officers have arrived to search the woman whose bags tested positive Hi. for heroin. Could you rub down the search for us? Just make sure she got nothing on her. Customs sees over 400 kilos of heroin each year, and officers in Gatwick regularly catch smugglers willing to go to great lengths to hide their packages. If you're going to do it, you might as well be thorough. And um, the, the whole bending over squatting thing, if somebody's got a package shoved up the backside, then if you bend them over, uh, and squat, then unfortunately you can either see the package or it'll come out, generally. Okay, and what you need to do is squat down for me, so I can check that you haven't got anything inserted in any of your offices, okay? So you'll need to squat down for me, turn around, bend over and pop your butter cheeks for me as well. But as I said, you won't be touched at any time, so there's no need to worry about that. And if I can get you to hold on to the side of the bench, okay, and if you can pop your butter cheeks a little bit, with your hands. Part of the cheeks. That's fine, okay, and if you can just turn around for me and squat down for me as well. So I can... Okay, that's fine. The search finds nothing, but the passenger is surprisingly understanding of her treatment. It's good. Because it makes you to be scared to do such things. I came to this country just to make a living for me and my children and my family. That's it. I do my work. I can work 7, 24, 7. I don't want just a quick money or anything. I believe in my Andrew work. What I can do with my hands to get money, I know that. Today is the start of a two-week tour of duty for the customs officers aboard Customs Cutter Searcher. Make quite a problem. 
The intelligence hub has identified a ship heading to the Cornish port of Foy from Turkey, the gateway to Europe for heroin from the opium poppy countries of Asia. She's Turkish with 15 Turkish crew on board. Obviously with a Turkish ship, we've got the possibility um, of heroin being on board the ship. There's also a good chance that there'll be some cigarette smuggling from Romania because LMMs are extremely cheap. The race is now on to beat the ship into Foy, so the officers track the vessel into port. Catching smugglers off guard is vital to prevent any drugs or tobacco being thrown overboard before it can be seized. It's okay. Okay, okay if we come in, Captain. Have you a crew declaration? Yes. Uh, stores declaration and also ship's declaration, Captain. The captain appears to run a tight ship, but sometimes the opportunity for the crew to make extra money on the side can't be resisted. My crew will be checking the vessel now, and if there's any problems at all, I'll, I'll come and have a, a word with you. I'm not expecting any, so that's OK. You, you've had no problems with drugs or anything with the crew? No, no. no. I should. Are you sure that's OK? Yeah. OK, that's fine. Right, thank you, Captain. I mean, it's from Turkey, so I mean, our suspicions are aroused for heroin really more than anything else. Um, also, as we mentioned before, it's uh, cigarettes are cheap in Turkey, and it's also come uh, by Romania and Spain, which are also quite cheap for buying cigarettes. So there is, there is a chance that the crew might be tempted to smuggle large quantities of cigarettes. Uh, but what we're really after here is heroin. Investigation officers in Dover also work around the clock to stop organised criminal gangs bringing drugs into Britain. Back in July of 2004, a, a vehicle was stopped at uh, the Eastern Docks of Dover, driven by a gentleman by the name of When his lorry was stopped and searched, uh, a couple of brown taped packages were found in the cab of his lorry. The packages were full of drugs. As a result of that, he was arrested. And that was how it all began was questioned about the drugs, while his truck was impounded and searched, much to the annoyance of its owner. Well, Mr. would have been quite enthusiastic to get his trailer back anyway, because he had a business to run, apparently. There had been one or two calls uh, uh, where he would uh, make inquiries as to when he could have his trailer back. And, uh, well, he was uh, overly enthusiastic, in my opinion. Alerted by his urgency to recover the truck, investigators began to dig into his background had been convicted twice before in 1997 as part of a conspiracy to import uh, drugs within um, adapted exhausts in units, art articulated units. At that point, uh, I sort of decided that perhaps we ought to look a bit deeper into the uh, either the unit or the trailer. Now knowing pedigree, the search wouldn't miss the clues a second time. In, in the side locker of the trailer, there was a box of, of grey bungs, uh, and they were sort of consistent with the, the bungs that were holding the mud guards over the wheels on the trailer. They found a strange tool which unlocked a secret compartment full of Class A drugs. Once uh, they finished the search, they removed uh, uh, a, a large number, of, a further large number of packages, uh, uh, and uh, a significant quantity of cocaine and heroin amongst those packages. The elaborately engineered concealment fitted perfectly with previous attempts, and it was obvious why he'd been so keen to get his truck back. A team of specialist officers went to Liverpool to arrest and gather financial evidence, which would prove his lavish lifestyle could only be funded by drug dealing. So it's put to Mr during the interview that he seemed to have a far better standard of living than the officer who interviewed him, who coincidentally was on the same money that was declared by and quite simply said, well, he didn't drink and he didn't smoke, and by making these savings, he could afford the extra three or four cars a year, the big house, the luxury holidays. When interviewed, denied any knowledge of the attempted importation. His response to the drugs being found were that he had no idea they were in his trailer. Um, his response to the fact that the trailer had been adapted suggested to him that, in fact, it wasn't his trailer after all. It, uh, it must have been that switched the trailers, and in fact, his trailer had gone somewhere, had disappeared. So uh, I set out to, to prove that the trailer did belong to him. But investigators found serial numbers on the recently replaced tyres, which they traced to a supplier. They confirmed it was 
who'd paid for the tires in cash. The game was surely up for but he wasn't ready to give in yet. He'd uh, pleaded not guilty uh, um, for, for some time and uh, it, it was quite surprising that he had, bearing in mind uh, the evidence that was gradually building up. Pleaded guilty on the day of the trial and was sentenced to 13 years in prison for attempting to import drugs worth over a million pounds. He was a very greedy man and he, he became complacent and he, he was caught. Meanwhile, back in Cornwall, no heroin has been found, but a search for cigarettes is underway. The Turkish crew are only allowed 200 cigarettes each whilst in UK waters. All other tobacco must be kept in a sealed store called the Bond. Right well, then, boys, uh, as far as the crew themselves go, nobody has declared more than 200 cigarettes. Um, and only four people have any spirits at all. But what the crew declare isn't always the whole truth. And so the officers must search the entire ship for illegal goods, which might be destined for the local black market. Not surprisingly, the cabin searches reveal a few stray cigarettes. So it's OK so far. I mean, some of the crew have got a little bit extra, but uh, there's no point upsetting people just for uh, tiny quantities of cigarettes. But Woody also finds a stash in the ship's office and in the wheelhouse. The ship may not be as clean as first thought. Was the cigarettes that were there earlier on? These? Okay. We've checked in here already. We've checked the chief officer's cabin. And the cigarettes that were up there have moved down here now, and they're moving things around to try and confuse us. Right, on this occasion, can you tell the chief I'll just take the cigarettes from him? Otherwise, we have these going ashore for, for business, yeah? And we, don't, we want no business in Foy. So we usually take a small amount like that, but because he's been obstructive in trying to move the cigarettes around, um, that's the reason I've taken them from him. Well, we're just a bit concerned that there seems to be a lot of stray cigarettes around the vessel. Yes. Um, we found, like I said, 300 in the chat table, 300 in the office. Yes. Are there any more cigarettes before we search the vessel any further now? I think no, Shay. Just the one, please. No. No, that's we definitely no more cigarettes, no? No. If, if there are any more cigarettes now, this is an opportunity for you to ask the crew to bring the cigarettes to us now before we find them. If we find cigarettes now when we search, we will be, we, you know, we will have to work for them and we will be cross. Uh, and we will probably find find the vessel. Okay. okay. So this is, this is a chance for you to come to yes. us now with any cigarettes, yeah? No, we don't have the more cigarettes. No more cigarettes. Okay, okay good. Thank you, Captain. Okay. But Woody then finds another 2,000 cigarettes in the captain's cabin, which will have to be seized. Yes. In one drawer, or four. Uh -huh. We stood in front of the next drawer. Uh -huh. I searched everywhere, waited for them to move. No open control, he stood in front of. Open the drawer, found the remainder. The embarrassed captain asks senior officer Colin for clemency. Could I take back a little bit because not enough our cigarettes for the Turkey from here? For that reason, could I take a little bit more cigarettes? You go back to Turkey? 11 days. 11 days trip? From here. There are two days here, yeah. 13 days. Captain, sorry, but the answer's... If, 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 if you said... I don't know, but if you put in the list, you'd said the cigarettes that you had, we could have had with the bond locker, but because you... Yeah, of course. Said that, but you didn't tell us that you had the cigarette. OK? And it's... In this country, I know some places you go, there's representation, cousins come, they take cigarettes, yeah. all that happens. Here, it doesn't happen. The cigarettes will all be destroyed, and the vessel will receive a hefty fine if caught breaking the rules again. There was insufficient evidence to charge the driver of the playground truck, but 980 kilos of cannabis worth 2.8 million pounds is safely off the streets.